Hey, this is Dr. Drew. And today I wanna to talk about how the food you eat and consume directly impacts your mental health, depression, anxiety, as well as your mental clarity. And this is all done through the connection between the gut, brain, axis. For the longest time in medicine, there was no discussion of these two systems. People would go to the doctor with mental health problems and they would be told, it doesn't really matter what you eat or consume, it's not gonna affect your brain health. And we know now that is simply wrong because the gut brain axis research over the last 10 to 20 years has gone up significantly. And I always tell people that the food you eat becomes who you are. It makes up all the cells in your body and it directly communicates with your brain through this gut brain axis, okay? And there's certain nutrients that the brain loves and there's certain things that can really impact your performance and drive up anxiety and cause all kinds of problems. And so that's what I wanna to touch on today a little bit. Some of the things that I think have a direct impact on your brain function. The big thing is blood sugar swings. They're starting to see research now, especially for neurodegeneration and Alzheimer's, that diabetes type three of the brain is what they're starting to call Alzheimer's. And what that means is a long standing blood sugar and insulin issue, which will go on for years or decades, can eventually start to degenerate the neurons of the brain. And so this is gonna impact memory, it's gonna impact your performance at work, and it's gonna directly impact your quality of life as you age and head towards retirement. So Obviously doing things to support blood sugar throughout your entire life is extremely important. Regular resistance training, walks after meals are just as good as most of the drugs they use for diabetes, such as metformin. And you need to make sure that you limit your sugar intake and processed food intake. Obviously our sugar consumption through sodas and candies and desserts has gone way up. People are not moving and exercising as much as they used to. This is causing a huge backlog in the system that can start to affect your brain. That's high sugar. What about low sugar? Obviously hypoglycemic events, skipping meals, going long hours between meals, that is going to impact your brain health as well. That can trigger anxiety. It can cause the dizziness, lightheaded, and balance issues. You're gonna make poor decisions. And so regular balanced blood sugar, high quality proteins with every meal, not going longer than four or five hours between meals is critically important if you want good, solid brain health. Other things that trigger anxiety, too much coffee. People that may already tend towards anxiety, then they start to take a bunch of coffee and they wonder why they're having these anxiety and panic attacks. And I always tell people, if you have any anxiety at all in your history, you might wanna eliminate coffee completely and cast caffeine for a period of 30 days and just see how you do. That one thing alone might be enough to fix it. But if you already tend towards anxiety and then you're taking coffee several times a day or you're loading up pre-workouts, which is two, three, 400 milligrams of caffeine, then you wonder why you can't get your anxiety under control. That is extremely important and you must look at that, okay? Caffeine's a central nervous system stimulant. If you're already kind of buzzing or running high, that's one thing you don't want to overdo. And then the flip side of that is alcohol. We know alcohol impairs how we function and how we show up and our memory and our sleep and, and it just completely deteriorates brain health. You tend to make bad decisions. Anytime there's uh, dramatic events in your life, quite often the common denominator is gonna be alcohol. It's almost like you know the decision you're about to make is not the best one, but it completely lowers your inhibitions. You kind of know my stance on this one. I talk about alcohol a lot and getting a control of that, cutting out the useless drinking is extremely important because it directly impacts your brain health. Sometimes you can make life altering decisions just because of that one thing. So I don't want that to be for you. Save it for birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, special times in your life. But to really get a handle on that as you continue your journey is extremely important. Sugar is another big one. We see this all the time in kids. Their personality can literally change on a dime if you give them too much sugar at once. They'll be more irrational. They might have more emotional events. They'll be harder to kind of just, you know, control and tame. They'll be maybe potentially more defiant. We see this all the time with behavioral issues. It directly comes from the diet. Too much processed carbs, too much sugar, not enough high quality protein, boom. That's gonna cause dramatic changes in your anxiety, mood, mental health and brain health, okay? Some things you can do to boost or improve this, fasting, using supportive exogenous ketones can be really good because it's all about the fuel that the brain runs on. Now, glucose is its sort of primary go-to, but a lot of good benefit from intermittent fasting on stabilizing brain health and mental clarity using exogenous ketones, whether it be MCT oil in the form of C8, which is a little bit more of a purified version to generate ketones. There's also powdered ketones you can add to coffee and water. And I've used uh, and sampled many of those over the years and they work incredibly well. There's something very powerful about turning on the ketone production in the body with fasting or nudging it in that direction with some exogenous ketones. It's all about controlling your gut diet and inflammation down here 
so that you don't have any inflammation and fire going off up here, okay? And then this also goes back to food sensitivities, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, eating the wrong foods for your system and things that you're sensitive to, that's gonna cause gut inflammation, it's gonna cause brain inflammation, and a la, you'll have this anxiety and or poor mental clarity. SIBO is another big one. Most people, not all, but a good chunk of people with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and I've done full videos on this, so if you wanna know more or you have gut issues, click the link below, and you can learn all about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Most people that have that tend towards anxiety, and when you treat the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and regulate and balance their gut, the anxiety goes down. A lot of times when people have anxiety, you'll ask them what causes it, and they don't often know. Some people know some clear triggers. There may be some you know, past events or traumas that if they're in a similar scenario will kick up the anxiety, but a large portion of people don't always have a good answer. They'll just say it's, it's general, it's random. One time it'll happen when I'm doing this, another time when I'm doing that. And there's no clear theme as to what's triggering it. And it's like, oh, I wonder what the gut's doing. I wonder if there's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because that is a big connection between anxiety and that gut issue. So check out that video. And if you have questions, just drop a comment below because I do find treating that really settles down people's mood and mental health, okay? So if you have any other questions, reach out, let me know. I would be happy to help. And if anyone you know in your world would benefit from this video, please share it with them, whether that's a family or friend. That is the best compliment you can pay to me and my channel is just to share it with everyone you know in your world. And otherwise, thank you for watching.